Welcome to Enter the Unknown, your one-stop shop for answers to questions that you were never bored enough to ask. My name is FJ, and today we're taking a step back and attempting something that I've always wondered about. We're asking the question, can you beat Pokemon Fire Red using the exact Pokemon Ash Ketchum used for every battle? That's not a catchy title, I've gotta work on these titles. After the experience of making the Bide Only Challenge video, I needed something a little less intense this time around. This one's pretty self-explanatory. I'm going to be taking on each of the gym leaders and the champion with the exact Pokemon Ash used in the anime. That means catching and training the Pokemon he caught, leveling them to the point where he leveled them, and then battling with the Pokemon he chose to use. I don't know if you remember this, but Ash was a real dumb boy back in the Kanto days. He didn't know ground types from flying types or his arse from his elbow. At almost no point did he actually earn a gym badge. He usually just got the gym leader to pity him enough that they'd just hand one over. On top of that, Ash's Pokemon really didn't enjoy evolving. Something about this kid who refused to grow or learn really inspired them. Anyway, I mentioned levels earlier. That's the part that really interests me. Very early on in the anime, it was established that levels do exist. Okay, now tell us what its special attack is. Pidgey's attack is Gust. At level 5, Sand attack. At level 12, everybody knows that. Now, can you just tell me at which level Pidgey evolves? And what's the name of Pidgey's advanced stage? Based mainly on what moves they've used and which moves they're yet to learn, I'm going to try to pin down what level each of the required Pokemon were at for each major battle. Of course, this is based off Ash's journey, so the battle style is on set and we're not allowed to use items because those are the anime rules. I think I've explained myself mostly, so let's get into it. At Professor Oak's lab, we pick up our Pikachu and watch on as Gary picks up his Squirtle. Also, I only realised like halfway through making this that I probably should have named my character Ash, but I'm dumb, and if I have to live with it, then you do too. Okay, I'll leave this first battle with Gary in, but it didn't really happen. This is an example of what definitely wouldn't have happened in the anime. Pikachu paralyzes Squirtle with his first Thundershock, and then wipes him out with his second. A completely dominant victory. After reaching Viridian Forest, it is of course time to catch our first Pokemon. We run into a level 4 Caterpie, and after struggling much more than Ash did, we finally manage to catch it. Caterpie wasn't the only Pokemon that Ash caught in Viridian Forest though, he also got his hands on a Pidgeotto. You may also remember that his first line of defense against the flying type was his newly caught Caterpie. Like I said, he was a real dumb boy. The bug type gets obliterated immediately, as you'd expect, so sorry about that one Caterpie. Once Pikachu comes in though, it only takes one Pokeball to capture Pidgeotto, which was nice because she was quite a few levels above us. With two new team members on hand, it's time to get to training. In the same episode that Ash catches Caterpie and Pidgeotto, he also managed to evolve the worm Pokemon into Metapod. That is an action-packed episode. Then, before reaching Pewter City, Metapod evolves into Butterfree. Unfortunately, he chooses not to use Butterfree in the gym battle with Brock, because even with the Rock-type weakness, I'm sure Confusion would have been a nice move to have. Instead, Ash goes with his other two Pokemon for the two-on-two -two Pewter gym battle. After Brock sends out Geodude, Ash goes with his trusty flying type, and after Pidgeotto faints, he sends in his Pikachu. You may recall that Ash didn't win this battle, so hopefully it goes better for us. This is where we're at heading into the battle. Pikachu's at level 10, because at level 11 he'll earn Quick Attack, and he definitely didn't know that when Ash battled Brock. His moveset consists of Thundershock, Growl, Tail Whip, and Thunder Wave. What a terribly unhelpful group of moves. Our second Pokemon, Pidgeotto, is at level 19, with Quick Attack, Sand Attack, Tackle, and Gust. Ash's Pidgeotto never used Tackle, but had used all of the other moves by the time of this battle. In the episode after the showdown in Pewter City, Pidgeotto used Whirlwind, which she'll learn at level 20. That's obviously close by, so 19 seemed like a safe bet. Okay, let's get into it. Brock leads off with Geodude, and we send in Pikachu. There's not a lot that the Electric Mouse can do in this battle, but he can lower Geodude's defense to soften him up for Pidgeotto. After lowering his defense a few stages with Tail Whip, Pikachu goes down to Tackle. It's all down to Pidgeotto now. With his defense having taken a hit, Quick Attack is almost enough to one-shot the Muscular Rock Monster. Geodude then wastes a turn using Defense Curl before a second Quick Attack knocks him out. That one's for Pikachu. Good job, little mouse. Brock's ace Onyx is out next, and his defense is fine and healthy. That's not good. 
With Rock Tomb at his disposal, we need to stop him from attacking as quickly as possible. We go for a couple of sand attacks right away, but Onyx does land a Rock Tomb. We then trade attacks, which definitely goes in Brock's favour. We get off three more quick attacks while Onyx can only land a single tackle though. A couple more attacks are only countered by a single bind. With grains of sand clogging the rock snake's eye holes, he can't do much to stop us. A final quick attack wipes him out and earns us the boulder badge. Ash's choices may have been terrible, but we have overcome them. Alright, let's move on to Cerulean City and the gym battle with Misty. With Pikachu refusing to battle against his friend, Ash chooses to lead off with Butterfree. Eventually, he ends up in the water and Ash recalls him and sends out Pidgeotto. So, we have our team for the Cerulean Gym Battle. Here's how they're looking. Butterfree is at level 23 with Tackle, Sleep Powder, Stunspore, and Whirlwind. In the episode prior to Ash facing off against Misty, Butterfree used Whirlwind, so we know he has to be at or around level 23. Pidgeotto is at level 27 with Wing Attack, Sand Attack, Whirlwind, and Quick Attack. With the normal flying type breaking out wing attack in this very battle in the anime, we can really pin her down at level 27. With that out of the way, let's get into it. The gym battle starts as it did in the anime, with Butterfree facing off against Misty Staryu. The first exchange sees a tackle and a water pulse crossing sides with Butterfree dealing a bit more damage. Then he uses Sleep Powder to put Staryu to sleep and gets back to tackling. Two more hits knock out the star-shaped Pokemon before it can wake up and force Misty to bring out her Starmie. Once again, Butterfree has to get hit by Water Pulse before using Sleep Powder, but it makes contact for a second time. While Starmie sleeps, Butterfree is able to land four tackles, including two critical hits. After it wakes up, Starmie uses Water Pulse again, which confuses Butterfree and leaves him in one-shot range. After breaking through confusion and hitting a fifth tackle, the Bug-type knocks Starmie into red health, but Misty uses a Super Potion to heal it up completely. Butterfree snaps out of confusion in time to use Stun Spore, and with Starmie paralysed, I cut my losses and switch out to Pidgeotto. Paralysis doesn't prevent Starmie from attacking though, and Water Pulse chips away more than a third of Pidgeotto's health. She connects with a wing attack which does a little less than half, before another Water Pulse lands, taking the bird Pokemon down to 25 HP, meaning neither of our team members can live through another Water Pulse. Luckily, Pidgeotto's second wing attack is a critical hit, and knocks out Starmie to give us the win. That earns us the Cascade Badge, and with that out of the way, we can move on and catch some new Pokemon. There was a three episode arc in the anime where Ash caught all of the Kanto starters, and that's where we're at now. On Route 24, Ash runs into an abandoned Charmander, and eventually he hands the Fire Starter to his team. In his debut appearance, Charmander uses Flamethrower for the first time, which puts him at level 31. That may seem high, but I didn't make the rules. Well, I did. But I'm just following those rules. Anyway, we add Charmander to our party and then head over to Route 25 to catch a Squirtle. I'm just now realising that the Kanto layout seems to differ from the game to the anime, or maybe Ash just backtracked. Really, we should have caught Bulbasaur first, but ignore that. Anyway, the Squirtle that Ash catches new Water Gun, so that puts him somewhere in his teens. Like, in levels. I'm not suggesting that Squirtle is older than Ash or anything. I'm, I mean, he might be. Who knows? I've really lost track of this. We caught a Squirtle, that's what I'm getting at. Let's move on to Bulbasaur. With the Grass Starter only knowing Tackle and Vine Whip as of the anime's 10th episode, that puts him somewhere between level 10 and 15, so 12 seems fine. With all three starters now on our team, it's time to head to Vermilion City and face off against Lieutenant Surge. This is one of the most iconic gym battles from the Pokemon series, and unfortunately for me, Ash only uses Pikachu. That means we'll be taking on Voltorb, Pikachu, and Raichu with just our lonely Pikachu. Lonely in the sense that he's all alone in this battle, not in terms of nature. He's actually careful. You're not going to catch him with cheese in his grasp and a trap on his neck. Anyway, you probably know that Ash ends up beating Lieutenant Surge because Pikachu knows the speed moves that Raichu never learned, namely Quick Attack and Agility. As Pikachu doesn't learn Agility until level 33, that's where we have to start. Going into the battle, our Pikachu's moveset consists of Thunderbolt, Agility, Quick Attack, and Slam. Let's give this a try. Lieutenant Surge sends out Voltorb first, and we obviously bring out Pikachu. One Slam crushes Voltorb, knocking it out in one, and Surge's Pikachu meets the same fate. One Slam cuts down our clone and makes it the one-on-one -on -one that the anime wanted. After a third Slam chunks away about two-thirds of Raichu's health, he paralyzes us with Thunder Wave. After a double team, Pikachu breaks through paralysis, but he misses Raichu and slams into the ground. 
Then the evolved electric mouse uses quick attack, which the anime suggested he wouldn't know, and we're stopped from retaliating by paralysis. Another quick attack hits Pikachu before he slams into the dirt yet again. A third quick attack connects, and this time it's a crit. That takes Pikachu down to 11 HP, but Slam finally lands again and knocks Raichu out. That earns us the Thunder Badge, and we can finally move on to Celadon City. Before Ash goes after his fourth gym badge though, he does say goodbye to Butterfree, so that's our next unfortunate task. Hey, it says Bye Bye Butterfree, that's the name of the episode where it gets released. Anyway, moving on. In the anime, Ash takes on Sabrina before battling Erika, but that's not possible in the game, so we're battling Erika first. In yet another complete mess of a gym battle, Ash's choice of three Pokemon are Pikachu, Bulbasaur, and Charmander. Now, Pikachu's at level 36, because although he knew Thunder by this point in the anime, that was only used in the gym battle with Sabrina, which I'm pretending hadn't happened yet. The most recent new move that Bulbasaur had used was Razor Leaf, and as he learns that at level 20, 21 seems about fair. Charmander's at level 35, with Flamethrower, Smokescreen, Rock Slide, and Metal Claw. No real reasoning here, the only clue we have for Charmander is Flamethrower, this is just where he naturally leveled up to, so I went with it. Looking at my team, you probably realise that this isn't going to be massively tough. Erika sends out Victory Bell first, and Charmander burns her up with Flamethrower. One down. Tangela comes out second, and once again, it's a one-hit KO. Flamethrower knocks out Tangela and forces Erika into her last Pokemon, Vileplume. Oh, and Vileplume is down too. That was easy. I have a faint memory of Erika's gym burning down in the anime, and I think that just happened again. With the Rainbow Badge added to our case, we can happily move on. In Ash's rematch against Sabrina, even though the episode is called Haunter vs Kadabra, he only uses Pikachu. Haunter does show up during the battle, but he's not actually used by Ash, he's just sort of hanging out. Pikachu used Thunder during the first gym battle with Sabrina, but the rematch happens a few episodes later, and by this point he's naturally made it to level 45, so that's what we're going with. His moveset is made up of Thunderbolt, Quick Attack, Thunder, and Agility. With that out of the way, let's jump into it. Sabrina sends out her Kadabra first, and we bring out Pikachu. So, once again, we're back in the world of the anime. This time around, though, it's a much less difficult battle. One crit thunder from Pikachu wipes out the psychic type in one and takes Sabrina down to three. Her female Mr. Mime is out next, and once again we lead off with thunder. It takes Mime down below half health, but a calm mind means another shot probably won't take her down. That proves to be true when Mr. Mime lives on one HP, but thunder does at least paralyze her. Sabrina uses a hyper potion to heal her right back up, before a thunderbolt cuts away around a third of Mime's hit points. We're able to outspeed and get another Thunderbolt in before Mime is ready to move. Unfortunately, Paralysis doesn't stop her from attacking, and Psybeam hits hard, taking Pikachu below half health. Then he misses with Thunder before Paralysis does do us a favour. We hit Mime with a final Thunder, knocking her out and leaving Sabrina with only two. Venomoth is up next, and once again, Thunder makes its mark. She retaliates with Psybeam, leaving Pikachu on just 17 HP. Thunderbolt KOs the Poison Moth Pokemon and takes it down to a one-on-one. -on -one. Alakazam comes out last for Sabrina, and we more or less need a miracle. Thunder connects again and leaves the Cutlery Connoisseur in one-shot range, and for some reason he goes for Future Sight instead of Psychic. That gives Pikachu time, and he's able to hit another Thunder and pick up the win. That was seriously lucky, so let's just grab the Marsh Badge and leave. Before going after our 6th gym badge, we have to catch him up, because that's what Ash did and it will be important later. For now though, not terribly noteworthy. So, let's check out that aforementioned gym instead. In Fuchsia City, Ash chooses to use Pidgeotto and Charmander for his gym battle with Koga. For our team, we've got Pidgeotto at level 33, because at this point, the flying type hasn't used any new moves since learning Wing Attack. It's a bit difficult to pick out exactly where she should be, but this seems fine. Charmander, on the other hand, is nice and easy. In the battle with Koga, Charmander breaks out Fire Spin for the first time, and since he learns that at level 49, that'll have to do. Let's give this a shot. Koga leads off with one of his two coughing, and we start with Charmander. The Fire Starter outspeeds the Poison type with a Flamethrower and lands a one shot. When Koga goes out to Muck, we switch Pidgeotto in on our side. Then we run through a series of non damaging moves for a couple of minutes. I'm talking evasion raising moves, accuracy lowering moves, toxic poisoning moves, defense raising moves, we got them all. Once Pidgeotto is poisoned, we switch back to Charmander without much having changed. 
We spam Flamethrower for a bit and hit Muck twice in our three attempts. Those attacks take the purple sewage monster down to a sliver of health, which is unfortunate because it convinces Koga to use a Hyper Potion. Just like that, we're back to square one. After several attempts, we land another Flamethrower on Muck to take him down to orange health. Then, out of nowhere, we hit again. That burns Muck and leaves him with only a few hit points remaining. The Poison type uses his final breath to raise his evasion one final time. Truly heroic. Muck was in battle for like 30 turns and didn't land a single attack. It's a bold strategy, Koga. Let's see if it pays off for you. Coughing number two is out next, and for some reason, I switched out to Pidgeotto. I think the battle with Muck broke my brain a bit. The first move of the battle was a flamethrower one-shot on an identical Pokemon, so I probably should have stayed in here. Ultimately, Coughing knocks out Pidgeotto, and if we're being honest here, it was entirely my fault. Ash's dumb boy energy is really rubbing off on me. When Charmander returns to battle, one flamethrower destroys Coughing, because of course it does. We're down to a 1v1. Koga's ace Weezing comes out last, and after another flamethrower takes him below half health, he uses Smokescreen. It's not enough to stop Charmander, who fires off another flamethrower to knock out Weezing and earn us the soul badge. Okay, time for another detour. In the Safari Zone, Ash catches himself a Tauros, and if you're wondering why the footage you're watching is subtitled, it's because this episode was never dubbed into English. This episode never aired in the US, and honestly, I'm not sure why. It is truly a mystery. Anyway, we need to pick up a Tauros for accuracy's sake, so let's do that. It takes a little while, but eventually we get our hands on the Grassland Pokemon and we can move on. Well, now you may or may not know, Ash didn't catch just one Tauros in the Safari Zone. In fact, every time he tried to get a different Pokemon, a herd of Tauros galloped past and he just ended up with another one. So, I wasted a day doing that. This was so unnecessary. I think I have a problem. Let's keep going. Before heading to Cinnabar Island to take on Blaine, we've got to do some quick grinding. When Charmander knocks out a wild Raticate to reach level 50, he evolves into Charmeleon, but you know that won't last long. It just seems wrong to think of Ash with a Charmeleon, so when he knocks out a Growlithe to level up to 51, we get ourselves a brand new Charizard. Then we make our way to Cinnabar to stroll around the Pokemon Mansion a bit and take a look at the fossil we picked up. It's a nice little break from the action before jumping into our penultimate gym battle. Ash actually failed in his first battle against Blaine, but when he eventually triumphed it was using only his Charizard. This is another pretty iconic gym battle. As far as the level of our Charizard goes, this one doesn't make much sense, but hear me out. Charizard learns Dragon Rage at level 54, and he hadn't learned that yet in the anime. I know that the Charizard on screen right there already knows it, but that's Charmander's fault. Blame that little adorable lizard. I think 51 is fine, and that's what I'm going with. This actually works out nicely. With Stab and the big difference between our attack and special attack, I'm not sure the difference between Rock Slide and Flamethrower was that huge. Growlithe goes down in one yet again. Ponyta just survives and because he does, it means Blaine burns through two Hyper Potions before the horse eventually faints. Rapidash manages to get off a single stomp in between Flamethrowers that wipe him out, leaving just Arcanine. After each of our attacks, Blaine's Ace hits back with a takedown, and unfortunately for him, that meant recoil damage. So, even though he gets Charizard into red health, our newly evolved Pokemon finishes him off without ever really stressing. Blaine hands over the Volcano Badge, and now there's just one space left in our badge case. As is tradition at this point, the Verdian Gym battle is a complete and utter disaster. Ash isn't even taking on Giovanni, he's just battling Jesse instead. For the faux gym battle, he used Squirtle, Bulbasaur, Pidgeotto, and Pikachu, so let's check out where they're at for our team. Bulbasaur is at level 46, which considering he used Sora Beam a long time before this battle in the anime, that seems like the lowest he possibly should be. Squirtle's a bit harder to pin down though. The Water Starter is at level 45, which seems okay because by the time Ash reached Viridian City, Squirtle had been using Skull Bash for 30 odd episodes. He hadn't used Hydro Pump yet though, and wouldn't for a while. 
We've gone through Pikachu enough at this point, this is just his natural level by this part of the game, and it seems about right. Finally we've got Pidgeotto, and this one's the hardest of the four. In this battle in the anime, Pidgeotto breaks out Double Edge for the first time, but as it doesn't learn that move by level up, we're in a difficult spot. Instead of overthinking it, we're just going to leave her at 41 for now and get into the battle. Giovanni leads off with his lower level Rhyhorn, and we send in Bulbasaur. A single Razor Leaf destroys the Spikes Pokemon, and for some reason, the Team Rocket Leader sends in his second Rhyhorn next. Once again, one Razor Leaf does the trick to make it back to back one shots for Bulbasaur. When Dugtrio comes in, we switch out to Pidgeotto, predicting an earthquake. That works out perfectly, and the flying type glides through the sky while Dugtrio makes a real mess of the battlefield. A combination of Sand Attack, Wing Attack, and Fly get the better of Dugtrio before he can do too much damage. Nidoqueen is up next, and after a couple of Sand Attacks and a Quick Attack, she knocks out Pidgeotto. Then we go into Pikachu just to give him a taste of the battle. After getting in a Quick Attack, Nidoqueen obliterates him though. Now it's down to a 2 on 2. Squirtle comes in and manages to outspeed Nidoqueen and connect with Surf to knock her out. Giovanni brings out Nidoking last, and he's faster than his female cohort and outspeeds Squirtle to land an earthquake. That takes the Kanto water starter below half health, but Surf hits back hard and knocks out the drill Pokemon to give us the win. With our badge case all filled up, we can finally head north to the Pokemon League. Before getting ahead of ourselves though, we've got a few new Pokemon to catch. We add Bayleaf, Snorlax, and Heracross to our team, and yeah, I do believe he caught them all at high levels on Route 22. This is definitely how it happened in the anime, and I would rather you didn't question it. Now, I'm just going to skip ahead to the champion and our rival, Gary. Ash has battled Lorelei and Agatha in the anime, but they were just one on one matchups using his Pikachu. Lorelei wasn't even using her real name. I did go through those and record them, but it wasn't very interesting, so I just left it out. Just pretend the Elite Four doesn't exist. Ash vs Gary is all that matters now. So let's see what team we're going to be using. When Ash and Gary finally clashed after five years of waiting, the Pokemon protagonist used the team of Tauros, Heracross, Muck, Bayleaf, Snorlax, and Charizard. So for the final time, let's have a look at our team. We'll start with Tauros, who's at level 53 with Takedown, Strength, Swagger, and Rest. In the anime, Tauros used Takedown like 3 years before this battle, so he has to be at least 53. We have Snorlax at level 54 with Hyper Beam, Block, Sleep Talk, and Rollout. Once again, it had been years since Snorlax used his most advanced move, so again, 54 is probably lowballing it. Muck's at level 56 with Disable, Sludge Bomb, Minimize, and Screech. At no point did she learn Memento, so I was just keeping her below level 61. This was just the natural point she reached. Charizard's at 55 with Flamethrower, Dragon Rage, Rock Slide, and Fire Spin. By this point, Charizard had used Dragon Rage, so this seems about right. Honestly, the low to mid 50s felt about right for everyone. Bayleaf is level 52 with Giga Drain, Reflect, Synthesis, and Body Slam. Ash's Bayleaf never used Solar Beam, so I was just making sure to keep her below 55. Finally, we've got Heracross at level 53 with Brick Break, Mega Horn, Takedown, and Reversal. With the bug fighting type breaking out Mega Horn for the first time in this battle, 53 is probably bang on. Okay, time to relive this iconic battle, but where Gary accidentally got two thirds of his team wrong. Let's go. Gary leads off with Pidgeot and we send out Muck first. After restarting Aerial Ace does a small bit of damage, Muck hits back twice as hard with Sludge Bomb. Then we just recreate that turn and Pidgeot goes down without Muck in too much trouble. Gary sends out Alakazam next and we don't really have much of a choice here. Nobody wants to take a psychic from Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Spoon, so we just have to accept that Muck's time is done. One shot obliterates the poison type and evens the matchup. We go out to Tauros next, and Alakazam smartly puts up a reflect, which softens the blow from takedown. Psychic deals a lot of damage to Tauros, but he lives through it, and with a crit strength, he gives us the advantage yet again. Executor is brought out next, and there's no sense in really switching, so we call for Tauros to use takedown. Unfortunately, Reflect is still hurting the damage of physical moves, and with a single Giga Drain, the battle is squared up once again. Charizard comes out on our side and completely incinerates the Palm Tree with Flamethrower. Gary then gives us the matchup that everyone wants to see, but I don't want Charizard to get washed away, so I switch out to Bailey. The Hydro Pump from Blastoise still deals decent damage, even though it's not very effective. Luckily, on the second attempt, he misses the mark and allows Bayleaf to get off a Giga Drain. 
With the grass type healing up on every attack, he actually takes the lead in the battle, but once Blastoise's health gets low, Gary just forgets the clearly defined rules and uses a full restore. That coincided with the moment that Bayleaf ran out of PP for his only grass type move. We keep pushing with just Body Slam, but the tide has really turned now. Although he manages to paralyze Blastoise, the water type comes out on top in the end and makes it a 3v3. We send out Heracross next, and Omegahorn takes the turtle low for a second time, but yet again Gary uses a full restore. Then, in the intervening turns, a Brick Break and Omegahorn get him back into red health, but Gary just throws out another full restore. At this point, he's out of PP for Hydro Pump and can barely touch Heracross, so we take him into orange health with a couple of Brick Breaks instead of using Megahorn, and then wipe him out with a third. Gary's fifth Pokemon is Arcanine, and that's not a good matchup for Heracross, so we switch out to Snorlax. Then we just get a back and forth battle of Flamethrowers and Hyper Beams, which Snorlax just about gets the better of. While he's recharging though, Rhydon finishes him off with Earthquake and makes it a 2 on 1. Charizard comes in, and this is a real bad matchup for us. Flamethrower deals some solid damage before a Rock Tomb completely destroys Charizard in 1. Just like that, we're down to the last two Pokemon. Heracross comes back in and immediately gets to work with Brick Break. The super effective move lands and cuts Rhydon down to almost nothing. Gary doesn't care though, he just throws a full restore at Rhydon's head and keeps the battle going. Another Brick Break takes Rhydon down into orange health, but he actually outspeeds Heracross and lands a takedown before one final Brick Break finishes the job. Heracross is officially the sole survivor of the champion battle, and we've made it through Fire Red using Ash's exact team for every major battle. I know this wasn't the hardest challenge, but I personally found it really interesting to research and put together, and I hope you did too. This was pretty different to my usual challenge video, so thanks for sticking around. The last few weeks have been really good for my channel, and I can't thank you all enough for the support. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.